Hi, you're watching the second episode of Proto.io Essentials, a series of videos covering core features of Proto.io. In the first episode, we introduced you to Proto.io starting with the dashboard and the editor. We then learned how to build the first two screens of a prototype, exploring basic wireframes, then moving on to add visual fidelity. Most importantly, we learned how to link the two screens together using interactions. If you haven't already, we strongly suggest you go back and watch the first episode, as it covers vital lessons you would greatly benefit from when using Proto.io. In this episode of Proto.io Essentials, we'll be covering the concept of containers and custom components. Containers are canvases of any size, and like screens can contain UI items, interactions, animations, and more. Containers are most often used for creating reusable items such as menus, but also used for defining scrollable blocks. In Episode 1, we created the Product and Product Details screens of our sample project. In this episode, we'll build upon that to develop our prototype even further. Let's start by creating a reusable container out of the Rating Stars group so that we can reuse it in different parts of our prototype. To do this, we'll first need to select the Rating Stars group on our screen. Then we can either click on the Container button at the top left of our screen or right-click on our group and choose Convert to Container from the menu. Let's see how we can reuse this container on the Product Details screen. To add the newly created Rating Stars container to the Product Details screen, select it from the Containers menu and simply drag and drop it onto the canvas, placing it where you want. You can open the container to make changes to it by double-clicking on it. Once you're inside, edit it just like you would with any of your screens. Let's change the color of the last star to give our comfy sofa a 5 out of 5 star rating. You'll notice the change we made is visible on the Product Details screen. Switch over to the Product screen, and like magic, you'll see the star rating change there too. In the next episode of our Essentials series, we'll show you a very powerful way to edit each product's rating individually by reusing the same Rating Stars container. Custom components are another way to reuse customizations and groupings of items, but unlike containers, custom component instances are fully independent of each other. Overriding a property of one instance will not affect the rest. To demonstrate custom components, let's create a custom button for our project. First, we'll switch to our Product Details screen and drag a button component from the UI libraries. Let's change its size and color to match our project. One way to add our customized button to the Custom Components library is by clicking on Add to Custom Components at the bottom right of the screen. Alternatively, we can right-click on our new button and pick Add to Custom Components from the menu. As you can see, it has now become available under the fourth tab of the right panel. For the purposes of this tutorial, we have created an additional screen, the Splash screen. From our Custom Component library, we'll drag our customized button and place it where we want. As the button is fully customizable, we can change its label to fit the new context. And just like that, we have achieved UI consistency across our prototyping screens. Next, we'll take a look at scrollable containers, which are extremely handy when you want to make parts of your screen scrollable. Let's have a look at the product screen to show you what we mean. To create our scrollable container, we'll need to add more products that expand beyond our canvas area. Duplicate the existing products to make your product list longer. Edit the image, title, and price of each product to match your needs. Now, let's select all products, including the featured product on top, group them together, and rename the group to Products. Although grouping is not required to create a scrollable area, it allows you to keep your project tidier. One way to change the new group into a scrollable container is by clicking on the Scrollable button at the top left corner of our screen. Alternatively, we can right-click on our group and choose Convert to Scrollable Container. This will create a container whose bottom edge will match the bottom of our screen. In the Properties Inspector, make sure the container is set to Scroll Vertically. Although the four new products are no longer visible, they are still part of the container and we can access them by double-clicking on the container. To return back to the default level of Zoom, you can always click the Maximize Canvas View button. Let's preview our work so far. As you can see, our scrollable product area looks and works exactly as we intended. 
Lastly, let's look at how we can create one scrollable area within another scrollable area. We want to change the New Arrivals top area and make it into a horizontally scrolling carousel. First, we'll enter the products container we created earlier by double-clicking on it. Then we duplicate the New Arrivals group twice. We can replace the text and image for each of the new groups accordingly. Next, we'll select all three groups and create a scrollable container. In the container's properties on the right panel, we want our scroll option to be set to horizontally. We'll also turn on the Treat Scroll Container as Snap Carousel option, so that when swiping, scrolling will pause at each product. Let's preview our work so far. Our products container now scrolls both vertically and horizontally. We can improve the UX of our horizontal snap carousel even further by adding a page controller. First, let's drag a page controller component from the UI library and add it under the title. We'll then enter the page controller's properties and set the active button from None to Button 1, which is the default option we want to appear when the screen is first visited. Let's customize the size and color of our page controller. Now let's link our container with the page controller so that, whenever we scroll horizontally to a new page, the corresponding dot will be highlighted. To do so, we need to add an interaction to the New Arrivals container. We'll choose Container Page Change as our trigger and Sync Page Controller Item as our action. From the Item dropdown, we'll choose the page controller we just added. Let's now save the interaction. This interaction handles the case, where the user swipes through the carousel pages and highlights the appropriate dot. We need another interaction that switches to the appropriate carousel page when the user presses one of the dots. Let's start from the first dot and introduce our interaction. We want that on tap we are taken to the first container page of our current container. So in this case, our action is go to snap container page. Our item is the new arrivals container. And since we are assigning an interaction to the first dot, we want it to take us to the first page of the container. Now let's copy and paste the interaction to the second dot. The only change we need to apply is that our interaction takes us to the second screen of our new arrivals container. Let's repeat this for the third dot. We can now preview what we've made. As you can see, the page controller works beautifully. When we click on each dot, the carousel switches to the appropriate page with a nice animation. Also, when the horizontal container is swiped, the corresponding dot of the page controller becomes highlighted. So, that's it for today. Thanks for watching this second episode of Proto.io Essentials. We strongly encourage you to spend a few minutes to try out and experiment with the skills you've learned today. Stay tuned until the next episode where you'll find out more about adding animations to give life to your prototypes.